Good evening. You're watching the main news on Hoi International Business Channel. I'm Maisie Mock. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. The government plays down concerns over not enough doctors for a new medical scheme. Health officials try to ease fears over bed bugs following an infestation in South Korea. And customs officers seize $70 million worth of fake goods destined for Singles Week. There is concern over a lack of participating doctors just days before the government launches a pilot scheme to detect chronic diseases. A doctor's union says the consultation fee is not attractive, but the authorities believe that more doctors will join later on. A partially subsidized scheme to screen people for diabetes mellitus and hypertension will be launched on Monday. Residents aged 45 or above can register at district health centers and select a doctor for consultation and follow-up. Commissioner for Primary Health Care Pang Fai Chow was asked to address fears that the high turnover of doctors in big medical firms could lead to the cancellation of appointments. Pang clarified that patients are partnered with a doctor and not his company if he belongs to a medical firm. He added that even if the participating doctor is on leave, his colleagues in the same clinic could attend to the patient. The government had earlier expected around 1,000 doctors to participate in the scheme, but only 337 have signed up so far. Pang said this is normal in the initial stage of a scheme, as doctors need more time to understand it. He expects more will join after the government releases more information. However, Henry Lern, president of the Doctors' Union, said members do not find the program attractive even if they get $316 for each consultation. Participating doctors are recommended to charge patients $150 and receive $166 from the government. A senior health official has tried to ease fears over bed bugs following an infestation in South Korea, a popular destination for Hong Kong travelers. It's not a very serious problem, but then um, hygiene-wise, it might pose a problem. And I'm sure relevant government departments will be making announcements as to how we can prevent the spread of uh, bed bugs and how that can be dealt with. Lee said the health department has urged the airport authority to step up precautions to stop bed bugs from entering Hong Kong on flights from South Korea. At least 30 infestation cases were reported in South Korea, including in a bathhouse and a college. Bed bug outbreaks have also been reported in France and Britain. Counterfeit items worth almost $70 million have been seized in a crackdown by customs officers. It's suspected that most of the fake goods were to be sold during Singles Week. Janice Yu reports. Customs officers displayed fake handbags, watches, sunglasses, clothing and mobile phones which they confiscated from containers during a 19-day operation codenamed Tracer. The items were imitations of products from dozens of well-known brands and were valued at $67 million. Three people, two women and a man, were arrested on suspicion of selling counterfeit goods in a shop and promoting the sales on social media platforms. The fake products were on offer for just 10% of the price of the genuine goods. Division Commander Tang Wei Han said investigators focused on cargo handling areas, warehouses and containers. He said smugglers frequently change their method of operation in a bid to avoid detection. Tang noted that aircraft warehouses and cargo handling areas are popular with crime syndicates because goods can be transferred quickly. He added that fake items were usually hidden with other products, making them difficult to find. In many cases, 
Imitation products make up only between 1 and 15 percent of bulk shipments. The customs department suspects that the items they seized during Operation Tracer were to be sold during Singles Week, which began on Monday. This was because the goods were individually packed. Officers will follow up by tracking down stores that planned to sell the items. Janice Yu, Cable News. A worker has been critically injured after a floor he was trying to demolish collapsed in Kwai Chong. The 62-year-old man was cutting rebars on the first floor of a village house on Fu Ok Road when the accident happened at around 9 a.m. The floor caved in, plunging him to the ground. Concrete covered the lower half of his body. The man was unconscious when he was sent to hospital with head and leg injuries. Overseas, Saudi Arabia is inviting Arab and Muslim nations for talks aimed at finding a peaceful resolution to the conflict in Gaza. Riyadh's initiative came as Israel said its forces had advanced to the center of Gaza City. Airstrikes reportedly killed a key Hamas arms maker and several fighters. The offensive was launched after 1,400 people in Israel were killed and 240 taken hostage in a Hamas attack last month. More Palestinians have tried to escape the fighting by heading towards southern Gaza. The Palestinian death toll has risen to over 10,400, including at least 4,000 children. According to the World Health Organization, the situation is worsening by the day. There are rules in war, and these rules have to be respected by all combatants. What we can verify is what is in the hospitals and on, on above ground. And these are urgently needed medical facilities, the only shelter places, the only leftover places for any type of decency and normalcy for people already in distress and wounded and homeless without food and water. The only Palestinian American in the U.S. Congress says she will not be intimidated after the House of Representatives voted to censure her for denouncing Israel. The idea that criticizing the government of Israel is anti-Semitic sets a very dangerous precedent, and it's being used to silence diverse voices speaking up for human rights across our nation. I'm the only Palestinian American serving in Congress, Mr. Chair, and my perspective is needed here now more than ever. I will not be silenced, and I will not let you distort my words. The motion was sponsored by Republican Richard McCormick, who claimed that Talib had called for the destruction of Israel. She dismissed the allegation, pointing out that she has been critical of Hamas. Talib has also condemned the U.S. for supporting Israel, as thousands of Palestinians were killed. The resolution to censure her was passed by 234 votes to 188. President Xi Jinping says there's a need for the common security of cyberspace to combat illegal and criminal activities on the Internet and protect personal information. In a pre-recorded video speech to the World Internet Conference in Wuzhen, she said countries and regions should abide by international rules and no country should pursue cyber hegemony. He also raised concerns over the rapid development of artificial intelligence. She is expected to meet U.S. President Joe Biden on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in San Francisco next Wednesday, according to sources. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index ended the day down by 101 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Tracker Fund was down 11 cents, while Tencent was down to 20 cents. Meituan was down 50 cents, while Alibaba was down 65 cents. To forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, euro is at 8.34, 
while the British pound is at 9.58. And over to the UK market, the London FTSE is currently up 5 points. Business leaders meeting in Hong Kong have been told that the city has much to offer during times of uncertainty. Financial Secretary Paul Chen says the investment opportunities in the SAR has the potential to reap big returns. Janice Yu reports. Addressing the Global Financial Leaders Investment Summit, Paul Chan said Hong Kong has always been resilient in times of increasing complexity and offers great opportunities with big returns. The innovation and technology ecosystem in Hong Kong has grown more vibrant with exciting achievements in nurturing startups, attracting enterprises and talents, and releasing the transformation, realizing the transformation of R&D outcomes. The financial secretary also told the audience in the Convention and Exhibition Center in Wan Chai that Hong Kong is a leader in Asian green and sustainable finance. We are already home to hundreds of green tech companies. Some of them are already selling their solutions across different parts of the world. Chen said with its connection to the Greater Bay Area, Hong Kong has the potential to be an international hub for green tech and finance. Janice Yu, Cable News. And finally, the weather. It will be mainly cloudy with sunny intervals tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 25 and 28 degrees. That's our main news for Wednesday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Maisie Mock. Good night.